Good afternoon, Northwest, and welcome to the November edition of Husky Headlines. I'm Abby Laux. And I'm Allie Brenneman. Hey, Abby, have you heard anything about the Connections class? No, but I heard that it has a great impact on the students who take it. Matthew tells us more. The Connections class at Northwest gives more opportunities to students with special needs while teaching them social skills in a relaxed classroom setting. I think that our class is unique in getting to develop that family and that sense of community because we're learning things together, we're growing together, everyone's working on something, but also we just get to have time to laugh together and have fun together. I like to be like around my friends and I like to like do the activities and be around like everyone because I like to be social and stuff like that because like I always have a smile on my face when friends make me happy. I have a friendship with all the kids in the class, including the peers. We've all like became friends on like a different level because we do so many fun things together that normally like we wouldn't do. So it helps the relationship a lot. I've made a lot of friendships with the class. I think like going into connections, I didn't really know like what was gonna come out of it. I didn't really know what to expect. And then when the year started, I automatically fell in love with it. And I think that just because of the positivity and kindness that all of the kids spread, I think that that's something that inspires me too. I think we're all learning from it. I think it's a learning experience for everyone and that's really important. My favorite class is actually Connections because you can just be there and be with friends and just be able to create that friendship. It's really fun just to hang out. This is my favorite thing to do is just hang out with friends. While this class has benefited the special needs students, it has also impacted their peer tutors greatly. The kids in the class have taught me what true joy is. They've taught me that um, you don't have to view people based off of their success or what they look like. It's just a room of no judgment and a bunch of love and fun and friendships that I have a feeling will last forever. It is an hour where I know if I'm having a bad day that I can go into that class and just there will be a smile on my face. I wouldn't change that class for the world. Connections is the best part of my week and the best part of my day. I love getting to create a space for students to come where they can just have fun, where they can focus on building what I call skills that are part of the hidden curriculum just learning how to be a friend, how to develop social skills, just a, a place to belong. Providing a place to belong is something Richter hopes the class continues to do while making an impact on the educational needs of the students who pass through the doors of Room 102. This is Matthew Mayer and Allie Brenneman for Husky Headlines. Hey Allie, did you know I used to dance when I was younger? No Abby, I had no idea. I bet you weren't as good as Tristan Glenn. Probably not. Maybe I should have taken a dance lesson from her. Jillian gives us her story. Tristan Glenn takes her dancing interest to the next level by teaching kids about the craft she cares so much about. I really, just, I love the art and I wanted to, I wanted to teach since I started and I figured that being an assistant is a great way to train for that. My roles as an assistant teacher are to obviously help out the teacher I'm working with, get kids into the lines, help them change their shoes if they need it, pick up the little loose ends that the teachers can't do because they're focusing on the rest of the class. I assist Miss Nyrie and I really enjoy class with her. Miss Tristan has lots of great characteristics um, for being a good assistant. She's very attentive to what I need for for help, like if someone's hanging on the ballet bar, she knows what to do. She's always good at using her voice, telling the kids to stop running. She's just a great extension of me. The best part about being an assistant teacher would probably be the love you feel as a teacher because the, this is a job that you can't really find anywhere else except for in the education world or in the dance world. Yeah, there's assistant coaches, there's things like that, but as an assistant teacher, you can really see the love and see these kids learn and how they grow. It makes her very happy. It gives her something to do with her free time, so she's not just sitting around bored. She gets to work with younger kids and help them. She has been doing awesome in class. She comes in and she teaches the kids combos that she does at home, and then she brings it into the classroom. It's just really helped her, I think. She used to be a lot more shy, and now she's kind of coming out, really becoming who she is, which is an amazing person. I just love to see how these kids are loving the art the same way I did when I was little and I just want to be able to spread the love. Glenn plans on pursuing dance in hopes of being a teacher one day or opening her own studio, but for now she will continue to help teach dance at Lay's Dance Studio. This is Jillian Adbury and Jeremy Bredemeyer for Husky Headlines. Next, I take a look at how Lauren Von Onen travels around Kansas City to perform at a variety of venues. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. 
From the couch as a three-year-old to the stage as a junior in high school, Lauren Von Onen stands out by writing her own original songs and using them to express herself. I don't really know why I got into singing. It's just something that's always been with me. Um, ever since I could talk, I think I've been singing, and it just makes me happy. Lauren started singing and doing concerts for us when she was probably around two or three years old, and she would get up on the coffee table, and she would stand up, and she would just sing any song she knew and give us a concert. When she got a little bit older, she would start writing her own songs. I started vocal lessons in seventh grade. At that point, I knew nothing about singing. I was just going off of what it sounded like in my head, and I've learned so much in the past, what, five years, <laughs> about just technique and healthy singing. Lauren is driven, which is very rare for teenagers, and she's naturally talented, but she does not just rely on talent alone. Beyond the fact that she's more driven than the typical teenager is that she knows her stuff musically and she's very enthusiastic about learning more. I would say in the last year, I've made a lot of progress that I didn't think I would make in high school. And just going around the community and doing more gigs and putting my music out has really helped me to grow as a musician. Bonanen has a passion for being on the stage and looks for any opportunity she can to perform. I normally have a gig about two or three times a month at venues around Kansas City, like coffee shops, festivals, farmers markets, just anywhere that I can play. As a parent, when I think about about how successful Lauren has become and, and the kinds of things that she started being able to do. I think it's really exciting. It makes it more real for us because of course parents always think that their kids are great, but when we hear that other people think that she's doing a great job too and they like to listen to her and they think her, her songs are good, that's really exciting for us and makes us wonder what the future holds. I would consider singing my job and it's what I wanna do as a profession. So kind of making that my mindset now prepares me for the future. I, I can't personally say that she is or is not going to always be a professional. If she keeps up with it, she's gonna do some very good things in this world. As Von Onen continues performing at coffee shops and music festivals, she grows more in tune with not only the music industry, but herself. This is Ali Brenneman and Nathan Fortune for Husky Headlines. Did you know that Mohammed Darwish does archery? I didn't, but Melanie tells us more. For a junior, Mohammed Darwish, what started as a hobby 10 years ago has turned into an opportunity to compete against others with the same interest. I started archery when I was about seven years old, but I didn't really start getting into it until I was about 11. When school starts, I usually shoot about once a week, but then over the summer, I try to go every day for at least two hours. Mohammed and I started shooting together consistently my, uh, my junior, I believe. Um, yeah, we used to just go to Shawnee Mission Park right here, or we used to go to a, a, a range in, in Aletha. The most supportive person Person throughout this activity has been Cole Cutler for sure. I usually oftentimes go with him when I go to the range and there is a competitive aspect to it as well where we, you know, try to challenge each other and see who's better. Darwish and Cutler not only shoot at ranges together, they travel out of state to compete. I have competed in one competition that was out in Utah. Essentially what it was is they put targets like on this mountain and you have to walk down the mountain and shoot these 3D targets that look like animals. It was really fun and one of the best experiences I've had. Total Archery Challenge was just such a good experience for Muhammad and I because all the shooting is really fun. You really have a great time in the mountains and um, you know immersed in nature. Well, right now I'm helping a fellow senior that goes to Northwest named Fussy and I've helped him get into the sport by taking him out a few times and showing him the ropes of how to do everything. Well, Muhammad's a good teacher because he he helps me, he mentors me, he tells me what are the good ways of shooting and my form and how to be on target as much as I can be. The most challenging part of archery is probably endurance and having the muscular endurance to be able to pull back about 70 pounds every time for each shot. I definitely see archery as something that I will continue in the future simply because I enjoy the stress relief that it gives me throughout uh, my life and I also enjoy the competitiveness as I'm be starting to get into competitive archery. I would tell someone who's interested in this sport to definitely do the research research and figure out everything that they need to know about the sport and then, you know, just go out there and buy their first bow and go out to a range sometime and give it a shot. Archery plays a huge part in Darwish's life and he plans to improve his skills and participate in more competitions in the future. This is Melanie Wilkins and Jillian Atterbury for Husky Headlines. Now for this month's edition of Sports Profiles. My favorite athlete is Serena Williams just because how um, invested she is in her sport and how much she stands up for herself and what she believes in.
say motivated to play my sport by uh, knowing that I have a team that depends on me, especially in my position. So I don't want to let them down and I don't want to let down the coaches. So my teammates and other players motivate me. My role model like in general is probably my mom, just because she like works so hard for me. I feel like I kind of want to grow up with that same toughness that she has, and I really look up to her. She's a great person. <laughs> Definitely beating the Valley North, because we didn't beat them by that much, but it was a good game. If I was stranded on an island, I would want to be stuck with my doubles partner, Hannah, because she is super smart and we get along together really well. I'd say my favorite place to play is at the DAC because the field's really nice and of course the fans, uh, it's really nice having them there. To be the best you can be, like just because their talent level is going to be different. So as long as you push yourself to be the best you can be, like that's all, that's all you can ask for. Have you ever had a bad sports injury? I fractured my growth plate when I was younger, but Riley tells us about athletes who have had serious sports injuries. Athletes throughout Northwest have experienced injuries at one point or another, but having an injury is only the beginning of the process an athlete must go through to return to the playing field. It takes hours of therapy, rehab, and rest to complete one's return to their sport. For athletes to um, get back to sport quickly that have suffered an injury, I think one of the things you have to be committed to the rehab process. It takes time. Everybody wants to be better yesterday. As a physical therapist and an athletic trainer both, I, I get that. But you have to let nature take its course and let healing occur. For Northwest senior Austin Harpenau, that process was necessary when he faced a serious back injury during his sophomore year. I was put in a, like, a full body cast from my like, waist to my shoulders. And from, that was for on, uh, three months, and then after that I was able to start physical therapy and try and get mobility and strength. My role while a player's recovering is to basically supervise their rehab and progress them so they can get back on the field as fast as they can safely. So getting them stronger and more stable so that they can do what they need to do to play. Recovery is an essential part of the healing process and there are many important aspects that help for a speedy recovery. I would definitely tell them to not come back too early, don't risk it. By doing appropriate strength training, flexibility, mobility activities, get proper rest. Again, that goes back to sleep and recovery and eating correctly and listening to your body. Sometimes athletes have a hard time understanding difference between I'm just sore from playing a sport or that I'm really really injured and sometimes it means you got to throw in the towel and take some time off to get right. I was playing in a soccer game and I stepped wrong and it got tackled. I waited about a week to go to the doctor just thinking that it was tight and that it would probably go away because I've bruised the bone in the same knee and it ended up being okay and then I went to the doctor finally like a week after and then I got an MRI the very next morning and by the end of the day they called and told me that I did that. Even though injuries are a part of athletics there are ways to prevent them from happening often. Things players can do to prevent injuries is conditioning, number one, weight training, and taking care of the little things, so, and not overusing their body. So sticking with one sport at a time because your body needs to work different muscles throughout the year, because otherwise we end up with all these overuse injuries. You need to be doing weight training, mobility exercises, stretching, dynamic flexibility, and of course allowing recovery in there. I know it's hard because there's a lot of days in a row of practices and games, but the reason why a lot of these over 
overuse injuries happen especially is because we haven't conditioned our muscles and our joints to withstand the forces that we constantly ask them to undertake during practices and games. In order for an athlete to return to their sport in a timely manner, it is crucial that they follow protocols set by their physical therapist, trainer, or doctor. When proper steps are followed, a positive outcome is more likely for the athlete's return. This is Riley Beach and Ryan Blank for Husky Headlines. How do you think it would be having your parent as a coach? I'm not sure, but Tanner Sample knows firsthand. Ryan tells us about his football experience. Since the age of five, Northwest wide receiver Tanner Sample has been coached by his dad, Tobin Sample, from kindergarten to middle school and now as an assistant coach at Northwest. Just like kind of more motivation in a way, because after like I do something good on the field, he always comes over, he's like, yeah, good job, great play. Then he always coaches me up after that as well. I think it's helped him for the most part. Um, there's times where I can tell him things like after practice or at home that um, might help him give us a few pointers. At practice, I'll tell him and the rest of the group, just a matter of one of those things, maybe he gets an extra benefit at home if I see something that I've found on Huddle or on film, that I can help him out and give him a few pointers that way. During his four years at Northwest, Tanner and his dad have had a unique experience that has helped Tanner grow in his game. It's always neat and a special uh, experience to have a, a coach and their uh, son playing uh, together or coaching, uh, working with each other. I think that once they get in that realm, though, they really do a good job of uh, maintaining those roles as player and coach. You know, there's no dad-son relationship on the field. They keep it very professional, and I think that helps, you know, Tanner as a football player, and I think, you know, it's pretty special for Coach Sample to be able to watch his son on a daily basis. Tanner and Tobin's relationship, you can't even tell they're father and son. They act totally professional. They just play it like he's a normal coach. Coach him these last four years here. Seen him working hard in the weight room. When he started here, he's probably maybe 100 pounds. So he's gotten taller. He's gotten more, gained more, more weight. He's been committed. I don't think he's missed any practices or any weight room sessions. So just seeing his commitment that he has to the program. He's helped me build more speed and he's helped me a lot more with my ball skills, like catching the ball. Having this father-son duo on the field has helped the team grow while giving Tanner and his dad a chance to become closer. I think, uh, you know, one of the things we preach to our guys from day one is that we're all brothers and they share in a lot of different things. And so having a father and a son tandem kind of helps bring those guys, maybe help them understand it, just that dynamic, just a little bit more. And it's really neat after a game, you know, to see uh, Coach Sample be able to go put his arm around his son. And, you know, th those are the types of things that we want to have close to our program. And I think it's pretty special for everybody else to get to witness that. Being coached by my dad, like everything. It's fun about it because I get to build more relationships with him. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed coaching him. It's been an awesome experience. I feel really blessed to be able to coach him. While his time on the field as a Husky is coming to a close, Tanner and his dad will have a lifetime of memories. This is Ryan Blank and Nick Swyden for Husky Headlines. Due to unforeseen circumstances, Northwest Snapshots will be put on hold until next month's edition of Husky Headlines. Allie, have you ever had Mr. Harper as a sub? Yeah, he has some really interesting stories. Mary tells us more. While most students see building substitute Bruno Harper as a familiar face around the building, few are aware of his life experience. I taught and coached uh, 25 years in uh, Arizona and here in uh, Kansas. And then I retired in 1996 and I wanted to try to do something different. I walked into a job at McKeever's Price Chopper and I figured it'd be fun to work in produce since I was a health minor that I had in college. And so I did that for 18 years. And then I retired again, tried to figure out what I was going to do. And about four months later, I became a sub and I was certified in Kansas and I became a substitute on uh, this is my fifth year. Aside from his friendly personality, Harper's stories of his past have the most lasting impact on those he meets on a daily basis. My mom was born in Chernowitz, Romania, and Russia invaded her town of Chernowitz, and they lost everything, and they became refugees. Germany was supposed to be an ally, so they moved to Germany because they thought they would be safer there. As it turned out, Hitler had other plans. They were put in a prisoner of war camp where they spent almost six years. Her youngest brother was very, very ill, and they couldn't save him. He passed away on the trip and luckily they all made it out of the camp because the conditions were very terrible. I know it's not as tragic as what some of the people went through in Germany, but I think to a certain degree we went through something that was just as bad and it has affected many, many families for many generations and it's still affecting them. And my mom went through so much, everything that happened to her in her young life to escape and be fortunate enough to come over here. I remember her telling us many years ago that when she saw the Statue of Liberty on the boat when they were coming over, she started crying along with probably everybody 
on the boat because to them that was freedom. We ended up encountering some very hostile situations. There was one situation where we came home one day and somebody had painted swastikas all over our house. And then we came home one day and there was a dead pig on the front porch. It was said, Nazis go home. There was another time when a neighbor was yelling at my mom to take her half-breed kids back to Germany. She told us growing up that you are never better than anybody else. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what you have. You're never better than anybody else. A person is a person. Even though my mom had the numbers branded in her arm, I didn't have to remember my mom by the numbers. I just remembered her as my mom, as a person. We have students here and, and really teachers, if we really got to know them, we have a lot of different uh, backgrounds. To me, that's educational. That's how you learn. I appreciate that. I appreciate learning from other people. And if everybody takes that away, I just think we'll all be better people in the end. And we'll leave here with a better understanding of the people we had the opportunity to be around. Finally, Peter shows us how Coach Washington's daughter is living differently from other nine-year-olds. When Northwest football assistant coach Leon Washington's daughter, Tristan, was diagnosed with gastroschisis before she was born, doctors told the family she wouldn't live past the age of four. Now, as a nine-year-old, she is not only living, she is thriving despite her continual struggles with the disease. Her intestines were on the outside of her body when she was born, and then when she um, initially was born, they did a surgery and removed the majority of her small intestines, so she has short bowel syndrome. She has a very strict diet. Um, she really cannot consume sweets because they'll kind of just run right through her. She doesn't quite grow as fast as most nine-year-olds. I believe my daughter is around 41 pounds now and she's nine. My son's five years old, he's 55 pounds. So that's one of the effects, major growing and being like a big kid, but she looks like she's four. I'm the smallest in my class and I'm normally in the hospital a lot, so I miss lots of school and I have lots of work to do. What Tristan lacks in stature, she makes up with determination. I would say her biggest strength is that she's fearless. She doesn't care what's going to happen. As long as you explain to her what's going on, she's perfectly fine with it. She's a very kind-hearted little girl. When she's in the hospital, she's not worried about what's wrong with her. She's more worried about other kids and how she can make them happy and cheer them up while they're there. She's really nice most of the time. Uh, she cares about you. To me, Tristan's just another regular old nine-year-old sister. She loves everybody and she's a caring person. Tristan's family hopes that her care and concern is an example for others on how to deal with adversity. One person can make a huge impact on a lot of other people's lives and that it doesn't matter who is standing in front of you, that it's not our job to judge them, but to be kind to them and just be there in any way. I believe Blue Valley Northwest and family and friends have been really, really supportive from coaches to staff, always checking in on Tristan, asking can he do anything, text messages, Facebook messages, everything. She's been all over the news and so forth, so Kansas City, everybody's been very, very helpful. It has given us a lot of strength and it's taught us all how to work together because it takes a village to run our household between our busy schedules and then all the stuff that goes on with Tristan. Fighting through six abdominal procedures and nearly 40 surgeries, Tristan has shown that she isn't willing to give in to this birth defect. It's taught me how like more how Tristan is and how it affects like the whole family. Like Tristan, she can really go through anything. She's a warrior, she's a diva princess too. But yeah, she can really go through anything. She'll be fine. Everything will be okay. My daughter says it all the time. When we're in the hospital, when she has to have shots, blood draws, she's like, I'll be okay, Dad. It's okay. So it helped me learn, like, things go tough in my life, it'll be okay. Hearing her say that all the time, knowing her condition, her situation, makes it easier for me. Defying expectations since the day she was born, Tristan continues to approach each day with a smile on her face and with the help of her family, hope in her heart. This is Peter Educate and Ben Johnson for Husky Headlines. That's it for this month's edition of Husky Headlines. I'm Allie Brenneman. And I'm Abby Laux. Have, Have a great, great day, Northwest. Northwest. Hey, Allie, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had a bad sports injury? I fractured my growth plate when I was younger. But Riley Tuff. <laughs> I bet you weren't as good as Tristan Glenn. Probably not. Maybe I should have taken a dance. Stop giving. I wasn't. I you, was you guys. Peter okay. Turned at me.